you want to ensure that when you go to the exam time doesn't run out on you needlessly now if you're going to resit and time run out on you whether it's in paper one or paper two or both then you should look back and think about why time had run out now I'm going to give an idea that I came up with on how to manage your time in the exam so you make maximum use of the time here you have 1 hour and 30 minutes to answer 60 multiple choice questions in paper 1 of the exam now what that means is that you have 90 minutes to answer those 60 questions so you have 90 minutes divided by 60 which is 9 over 6 which is 3 into 9 3 over 2 so you have 1.5 one and a half minutes per question so for each question you have on average one and a half minute now what that means is that some for some questions which you can answer probably in less than 20 seconds you answer them and move on leaving you more time to answer so each of the other questions further down all right now let's say it's a morning exam and the exam starts at nine nine o'clock it would end at 10 30 at one and a half minutes per question it means at question number 10 you should be at or below 15 minutes so for every 10 questions you answer you should have no more than 15 minutes gone all right so at 9.15, you, you start at question 1. At 9.15, you should be at about question 10. At 9.30, you're looking at question 20. At 9.45, question 30. At 10 o'clock, question 40. And right at the end, no, 10 o'clock, then 10.15, not at the end yet. At 10.15, you would be at question 50. And at the end, at 10.30, you would just finish at question 60. All right? So what you do, you start. When you answer 10 questions, you, you glance at the clock. When you reach question 10, you glance at the clock to see if 9.30 had passed, if 15 minutes had passed. If you're at question 10 and it's showing 9.60, 9.17 or so, it means you're running behind time. You need to speed up. Don't take too long to answer questions that are easier questions you need you're going to need more time to answer further questions that are harder every 10 minutes 15 minutes so at question 20 when you reach question 10 20 you glance up at the clock it shouldn't reach 9 30 yet if it if 9 30 had passed if it's 9 32 9 35 9 even later 9 40 you're running behind you need to speed up all right it's one and a half minutes per question which means 15 minutes for every 10 questions at question 30 9 45 at question 40 10 o'clock shouldn't pass 10 o'clock if it's 10 o'clock 
or before 10 o'clock at question 40, you're on track. Alright? So you keep us that, at that. Don't allow time to run out on you. Now, let's look at paper 2 that's done in the afternoon. You have 2,040 minutes to answer paper 2. What that means, you basically have 2,040 minutes. It's 60 minutes plus 60 minutes. That's 120 minutes plus 40. So you have 160 minutes. 2 hours, that's 120 minutes. 40 more, that's 160 minutes. To answer 10 questions. Here, this paper consists of 10 compulsory structured type questions. Now, if you should start on time, what that would mean is that you have 160 over 10, which is 16 minutes per question. However, it's not so straightforward. What I advise, the first 10 minutes, you read. You turn to the hardest question, the last question, and you read through it. Question 10. Read through question 10. Then read through question 9. Then 8. Alright? You, you would have already seen these questions. And they are harder questions. So, if the exam starts at say 1 o'clock. It starts at 1 o'clock. You spend the next 10 minutes and read so at 110 you finish reading if 110 comes and you haven't finished reading those all those 10 questions just start it means that you have 150 minutes left to answer 10 questions that is 15 minutes per question what you can do is use 15 minutes per question so at question 1 you are at 125 15 minutes later at question 2 25 plus 15 you're at 140 and so on but what I would also suggest is that you give yourself 10 minutes per question. If you do that, what would happen? Between 110 and 120, you would have done question one. Once 120 comes, whatever you haven't done, if you haven't done, finished it, you leave, make a little mark to show that you're coming back to it, leave a space, and at 120, from 120 to 130, you do question 2. You continue working. If you see a section of a question that is hard, taking you more than, say, 30 seconds to start or to think about, Make a little mark beside it, leave it to come back and move on. You should keep moving. 130 to 140. Question 3. 140 to 150. Question 4. At 2 o'clock. 150 to 2 o'clock, question 5. 10 minutes per question. Whatever you haven't done, you leave out. Make a little mark to come back to it. 
leave a space to come back to it now remember it starts at 1 at 2 hours and 40 minutes it means that you're going 1 to 2 to 1 2 3 at 3 40 you would finish at 3 40 at 2 10 between 2 and 2 10 you do question 6 between 2 10 and 2 20 question 7 between 2 20 and 2 30 once you see 2 30 come you move on uh, once you see 2 20 comes you move on to question 8 when you see 2 30 you glance up some of the time if 2 30 had passed you need to leave a space and move on once you see 230 comes, question 8, you start question 9. You would have done question 8 between 220 and 230. 230 to 240, question 9. 240 to 250, question 10. Then you have 50 minutes left to go back and finish up what you have done 50 minutes to go back and finish up I mean what you have left out you have another 50 minutes nearly an hour to go back and finish up what you have left out you would have seen these questions already so the theory is that it was being worked out in the back of your mind in your subconscious right just like when you try to solve a problem you take a break because of how hard it is you go to sleep get up in the next morning come back to it and you are surprised at how quickly you find the answer and the solution your subconscious mind was working it out in the background so you go back and you finish up whatever you left out it means that you did not spend the entire exam time on a hard question or too much of the exam time on a hard question meanwhile time is running out and there are questions that you could do waiting for you and you did not get the opportunity to touch them or you did not get the opportunity to spend quality time on those questions you don't want that you keep moving you touch every question you write as much as you can show as much working as you can so you would have gone on to do something on every question you don't leave out anything all right so that's just one suggestion to ensure that time doesn't run out on you during the exam